Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tony, and I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids. And I love to talk about curriculum, especially curriculum that I love. So one of the curriculums that I have fallen in love with this year is called BiblioPlan, and it's a really awesome family style history curriculum. And I've got all of our books for next year that I am going to flip through and show you guys what they look like inside. I haven't even really looked inside of these at all. One of them's still in the plastic wrap. So I just wanted to do this with you guys. I have really loved this curriculum. So if you are looking for a new history curriculum that you can do with your entire family, then this might be a perfect fit for you. If you guys have been around my channel for a while, you know that I don't do a whole lot of partnerships unless I really believe in a product. And this is one of those products that I absolutely love and I believe in. I am super excited to be able to partner with BiblioPlan to show you all of these products. Everything that I share with you is going to be honest. It's gonna be what I really feel, but I'm so excited to be able to show you how beautiful these books are and how great this curriculum is because I really, really, truly love it. This is a Bible-based chronological history. And it's just really great. It's got all kinds of amazing different add-ins and things like that. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking about it. I'm gonna flip the camera around so that you guys can see inside of BiblioPlan history. Let's check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a peek inside of the Remember the Days textbook. So this is the textbook, History for Junior Readers. It can be used for grades K through 12. It's mostly written for, I would say, second to eighth, probably. In my opinion, this is early modern days. The one we used this year was for medieval times. I had a second grader, a fourth grader, and a sixth grader all using it. It was a lot of information for my second grader, but overall, I think it's a good fit for, I would say, anywhere from second to probably eighth grade. So we're gonna be doing this this year with a third grader, a fifth grader, and a seventh grader. So let's look inside of this. So this is the main textbook that you would use. So here's the table of contents here that talks about everything that's gonna be covered from early modern days, um, the Spanish Empire, all the way through California, the Second Great Awakening. So this is what a basic chapter looks like. Um, so this will be the, this is the prologue. It's got a bunch of different color coordinated boxes that have all kinds of information. It's kind of the key points that you need to focus on. What I do when I am reading this with my kids, I read all of this and my girls read these boxes. So like my youngest, I would usually give her one of the smaller boxes. You know, my older girls will read the bigger boxes. Even the, the print underneath of the pictures, I always have them read it. It's just a good way to keep them engaged and make sure that they're actually paying attention. But it's broken up. A lot of times it's got lines and different things to break up the sections so that if you're not following along in the family guide and you wanna just have a good stopping point. But it's got lots of nice colored pictures. And it's it's very engaging. So that was the prologue there. So here's a look at chapter one. Um, it breaks it down into different sections. Like this is the first colonies. We've got maps and nice color pictures and things like that. So usually you'd read maybe up to this line. And then you've got another section here. So the, uh, This is set up basically the same as the year before, the one that we used. So you've got different people. The people or special events and things like that are all bolded or in a certain color and then sometimes there's a definition in like a yellow box like if they mention it here they're gonna give you a definition here that's the kind of thing that I have my girls read so they'll read all these boxes for me they've got things highlighted that are important for you to learn it's got a lot of color I feel like it really can keep their attention because they've got lots of pictures throughout so it's not just text which is kind of nice so that's, let's see how long this chapter. So there's chapter two. So it's a lot of information packed into each chapter, but it's doable if you break it up into different sections. So I'll just give you a little flip through of the rest of the book here. It's a very interesting history book, I think. And then you've got an index in the back, and then I believe there is a map. 
There's map helps here, which is kind of cool. There's map helps. The 13 colonies there. So that's kind of neat to have that as a reference in the back of the book. So now we'll look at the next thing that I got. So this is the family guide. This is not required, but it is amazing and it's super helpful in order to get the most out of this curriculum. So this is year three, early modern US and world history from 1600 to 1850. And this says complete lesson plans and book list for a 34 week literature based study of early modern history, grades K through 12. So this has every single thing that you need for grades K through 12 for this entire year. And this thing is jam packed with so much information. You've got your table of contents here. It's got a welcome page that just talks about this is important to read. So when you get this, make sure you read these pages because it talks about how to use this, how to use um, the different books that they give you. Um, it's just really helpful and tells you what the different, you know, uh, codes and things mean and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, that's helpful and gives you all the different options you can do. Um, they've got, so they've got the family guide. They've got remember the days, which I just showed you. They've got the companion, which is, um, the textbook for grades seven through 12. But a lot of people do use this book for, um, seventh and eighth grade too. We've got the discussion guide. I did not get that, but that is an option. That's usually, I think that's geared more towards the high school students. There's cool history questions, which I'll show you in a minute. There's hands-on maps, which we used this past year that were really great, um, but just to switch it up, we're not using it this year. There's hands-on maps for different levels. Um, they have a timeline book. There's a craft book. There's coloring books, and there's hands-on notebooking. There is so much so, so much. And the hands-on notebooking, there is a ton of stuff. There's different giants of faith, which I think are like missionaries and different heroes of the Christian faith that you learn about. There's hands-on states, hands-on presidents, hands-on Asia, hands-on Europe, hands-on Americas and Oceania, and hands-on Africa. I was looking at those and they looked amazing. And I just knew that I was going to buy more than we could actually physically do because you could not do all of this. But these things are pretty awesome. If you like notebooking, they look really great. Um, the optional spine list that you can use. Some people use Remember the Days. Um, some people use the Companion, which is also from BiblioPlan. You've got the Bible. Other optional spines that some people use that I have not used yet, but some people use Story of the World. Um, there's Usborne Internet Linked Encyclopedia of the World. All these things are going to be scheduled out in this book. So if you want to use any of these things to supplement, you can. A History of Us, a History of Us source book, a child's First Book of American History, Trial and Triumph, Stories of Church History, Famous Men of Modern Times, The Mystery of History, Power Basics, American Government Textbook, and Kingfisher History Encyclopedia, which we used last year that was really good. You're not going to use all of these, but you can pick and choose which ones you want to use. So there's so many options. Probably no two families are going to do this exactly the same way. This breaks down all the books. So we are, this has a scheduled book list for K through eight for the entire year, and it breaks it down by unit, which is really cool. So it tells you um, which grades you're going to do. So like this book, Christopher Columbus, that's for grades K through two. Um, this, this is all going to be K through two and some three through five. It's got unit two, unit three. So anyway, it's all broken down. This is all the readers three through five and some five through eight, again, broken down by unit. And then we've got family read alouds here that's got um, units one through six right here. This is scheduled book list for grades eight through 12. I'll show you guys real quick. Something that I did that I found really helpful is I put these little tabs in here because you're not gonna use this entire thing. So this is just washi tape, but I put tabs on the different sections that I was gonna be doing regularly, that I was gonna be referring to regularly, like the re read alouds and different things like that. So I'll be going through mine and marking the different pages um, so that I can easily flip through it. This one, I put a mark here to show the start of week one. So always would be easy to find that. And then in the back, because we used the Kingfisher Encyclopedia, I had a mark here. So that was just a much easier way to keep track of what's what so you're not searching through this book because there's so much in this book. So that's just my recommendation. So you've got optional resource list for the entire year, which is broken up in, by each unit. 
you're not going to do all of these things. There's free downloads. Here's an annotated book list for unit one. So this is nice because it actually expands on each book that you could do. So you can look through here and say, I think I want to do this one. Well, then you can read what it's about. It tells you how many pages, who it's by, um, which week you're going to be doing it on. So it helps rather than just ordering all these books from the library. You can go through here and pick which book based on the summary if you haven't heard of it. And that's just really a nice thing to have in here. So it's not just a list. It's actually the the summary of each book and how long it is and different things like that. So then you've got the three through fives, the five through eight readers, eight through 12 in high school. Then we've got the family read alouds, which is all annotated. So it's got a summary of what those books are about, optional resources and fiction. We've got movies, um, all kinds of things in here. There's hands-on fun. So if you're doing any of these extra notebooking things or different activities. Those will be in here. Audio, they've got different audio um, stories that you can listen to. There's music, there's more books. And then I'm gonna show you how a week is set up. So here is week one that is the new world that gives you what the unit is about and the, what the topic is about. And then this breaks down the different resources that you could use. No, don't be overwhelmed. You are not going to do all of this. So this tells you, like for us, and you could go through and just highlight the different things that you are going to use. So this is the Remember the Days. If you're using Remember the Days Chapter 1, if you want to follow the schedule, which you could do it two days a week, you could do it five days a week, you can do it however you want, but they have it set up for a three-day-a-week schedule. It just tells you what you're going to be reading. So they don't use page numbers. I wish they did, but they don't. But you just go by the title that's in that chapter. So you'll read what was the early modern era, which is the title of that section in chapter one. And you're going to read all the way up to U.S. history, first colonies. So you're going to stop before you get to world history. And I'll show you in here what that looks like. So this is actually started with the what was the early modern era. So the prologue is actually included in there. Then you're going to stop. You're going to read first colonies. You're going to read all the way up to here. And you're going to stop when you get to this section, which is world history. So when I get to world history, which says Aragon, Castile, and Spain, you're going to read until right here. So that this section is what you're reading for day one from there to here. And you're going to stop here. And then day two, you'll write do it here. So when I fill this out in my planner, I just write down the pages. So I'm not trying to find the titles and stuff. So then this is what you'll read on day two. Goes down to finishing the conquistadors, which is right here. So you'll go to the end of that section. And your next section should be world history, which is right here. So that's the section for day three. So that's how this is broken up. That's what this is telling you to do in that Remember the Days book. Now, if you use the companion, you do the same thing, except you do it following right here. They've got the coloring book, hands-on, all these different things, the timeline pieces. So it'll tell you on day two of history, that's when I'll do my timeline pieces. And just make sure you do that. If you're doing cool history questions, you do that on day three, because you will have read the whole chapter, and then you can answer the questions on day three. Some people do them as they go. You don't have to follow this, but this is a good guide to get you through it. Bible reading, if you want to use this as your Bible, which we did this year for part of the year, you'll do what it says. Proverbs, study chapter one, and then consider using the Proverbs. They've got all this written out, and you're just going to follow that. And then all these other books, if you're using the story of the world, you're going to do chapter one, this section for day one, and then the rest of that on day two. So... This and then the, the Kingfisher Encyclopedia was something we used this year. So you go to the back of the book to find the schedule for the Kingfisher Encyclopedia. That's in the back of the book. Then at the bottom here is the literature reading. So you, it's broken up by the different grades. So we've got K through two. Those are the two books that you can choose from for your K through two child to read this week. It doesn't tell you how many pages per day. It just says get read this this week. So you can figure that out. Grades three through five, there are two books that they can choose between. Grades five through eight has three books and, and so on. And then there's missionary readings also if you want to do that. You've got your family read-alouds up here, 
which um, is broken down. It tells you to read chapters one through four. This is something that's kind of cool too. You can actually do writing ideas. Um, they just give you a little question or an idea of something that you can write about. So like if your kid was the, I, these are the different stages. I am not a super classical um, person, so I don't know a lot about the age, but I, I'm pretty sure young writer is like early elementary or elementary grammar, I'm assuming is kind of like middle school and I think logic is high school. I could be wrong, so if I'm wrong, sorry. But like, let's say your kid is in the grammar stage. So it says, write as if you are a boy or girl in a South American mine panning for gold for the conquistadors. What is your life like? So it's just a fun writing topic, just something to start start the child off and they get to write with that. So, and obviously this will be a little bit harder. That'll be a little bit easier. So those are kind of neat. You don't have to do that again. You can. Um, they've got all the hands-on activities. So if you do hands-on maps, it'll tell you what page to do. If you do Giants of Faith, you do that. So it just depends on what you order that you'll you'll see on the website. You'll know which package you order, what what different books you order, and you'll just follow it on here. So if, if this is overwhelming, I would recommend just highlighting only the specific things that you're going to be using. Um, then they've got optional reading ideas. So that's week one. That's all there is to it. But that breaks down everything that you're going to do. Um, and then as you go through each section, you will... This now, we've, we're doing the same section again where it says annotated book list for unit two. So then when for the next unit, it's got all the books. It's the same exact setup. Then it's broken down by grade, the different readers. And this is for every single unit. It's broken up in here. This book, there's so many options that you can do, way more than you'll ever do. So just pick the different things that you want to do. And, and stick with that. Don't overwhelm yourselves by trying to do too much. This is another thing that was probably in the first section, I didn't see it. They have memory work options for each unit. So you've got different Bible verses you can memorize. It says, we do not recommend memorizing everything on this list. Instead, recommend choosing one or more of the memory topics based on your students' ages and interests. So don't try to do it all. But if you want to pick maybe a Bible verse and maybe one of these things, sometimes it's quotes from people, sometimes it's poems. Um, there's an excerpt from a song, maybe. Qualifications for membership in a Massachusetts Puritan church. Just a big variety of different things that have to do with the history you're studying this unit that's just a fun thing for them to memorize. A poem there by Walt Whitman. Um, anyway, that's in every single section. So the rest of this book is just the same way. I will do a, a quick flip through, but it's basically gonna be the same setup throughout the entire book. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is a little bit different than what I did last year. There's a cool history for littles. There's cool history questions for middles. And then I think there's maybe upper middles. So this is basically just questions. Um, they're questions and activities for a 34 week study of early modern history. Now, this is for grades K through two. My kids are not that age. My girls that'll be doing this will be third grade, fifth grade, and seventh grade. But what we used last year, the cool history for middles, I just found it a little bit too challenging I felt like it was really hard um, for them at the stage they're at. And I've explained this in a video before, just that I think because we've done more of the Charlotte Mason history, it was kind of hard for them. The cool thing about this, you are allowed to copy any of these pages as long as you use it within your own family. So that's kind of nice. You only have to buy one of these if you want to make your own copies. So here we go. This is year three, week one. And it's got suggested um, reading from the companion, if you're using that. It's just got questions here. This is, I believe this is meant for oral discussion. If you have an older child, like my seventh grader, I may ask her the questions and have her write them down. Maybe even my fifth grader. But my younger child, I just, these are a little bit easier questions. They're not going to take as much digging to find the answers where I felt like this year, I feel like my oldest daughter would have been fine. My younger daughter had a little bit more of a struggle to find the answers and it wasn't just something that they learned there's so much information I just think this will be a little bit easier and it will make it more fun and not as overwhelming to them um, it's got the giants of faith if you're doing that it's got a cool 
hands-on activity. You don't have to do that, but I think that would be kind of neat. It seems like something they would enjoy. And then they've got Globe Fun at the end that's just reviewing stuff that they should be learning. Point out the continents and the oceans. Explain about how land covers only 30% of the Earth's surface. This is just little stuff. And I see why that would be more for the littles, but is it gonna hurt my seventh grader to have to review the continents every once in a while? Or the hemispheres and different things like that? I don't see a kindergartner being able to do this, in my opinion, at least in our family. So I feel like this actually might be a really good fit um, for our family. So we're gonna give it a try and see if this works for us, but um, I think it'll just be a nice review without it being kind of overwhelming and stressful. See then again, we're reviewing the continents and the oceans, see if you can name them without help. Point out the eight geographic regions of North America describing the unique aspects of each. See, this is not, I, I think, I'm glad I looked at this even though my kids are older because I really think, you know, finding England and Scotland, my kids could not do that when they were in kindergarten. Some of your kids might be able to, but mine couldn't. Point out the West Indies. I think this will be perfect for my girls. So they've got different little activities. They've got questions. This is something you're just gonna do each week. They do have some pictures in here that are gonna go with certain activities that it'll tell you how to do it. You know, even this. My, my kids would love this. Build your own Swedish log cabin out of pretzels and a milk carton or a juice box and graham crackers. Like that. that's just a cute little activity that's not gonna take a whole lot. But I think this will be a fun fit. And these aren't, super easy questions. Like, um, let's see, one of the tools Zhu used, I don't know if I'm saying that right, to conquer the Yin dynasty was a kind of pastry called a moon cake. How did moon cakes help? It's just something that they had to have listened to when they were doing, when they were listening to the reading that day, they should know. Um, but it's not like, you know, asking super easy questions. I don't think a Muslim holy man taught Emperor Akbar to treat Hindu Indians with respect. What was this holy man's name? Just to see if they're paying attention, see if they learned this. It's it's not that, I don't think it's going to be that easy to where this is like babyish, you know? What did Blackbeard call his flagship? Easier questions, but they still have to have listened. Here it says, point out India, Pakistan, and China. Mention that the world's highest mountains, the Himalayas, stand between India and China. I just think this will be... This looks amazing. And I'm glad I didn't let this little wording on the front that says K through two hold me back from, from doing this. Cause I think this will be really good. I think it'll make a lot more sense and be more enjoyable for my girls than what we did last year. Cause it was just a little bit hard for us. So if you think this is too easy for you, you may want to do the cool history for middles. So the next thing I got is the craft book for early modern history, a supplement for Biblio plan year three, US and world history from 1600 to 1850. So this just breaks it down by week. So we've got week one. It tells you what you need for materials. It gives you directions. This doesn't sound, this doesn't look super involved, but it's gonna have to do with what, whatever we studied that week. So like this, my kids will love, which was, this was one of the reasons I wanted to get this craft book, make s'mores empanadas. Um, it talks about what empanadas are, what ingredients you need, directions to make it. How fun is that? I think that sounds amazing. Um, and then there's a little art project. So there's a bunch of different activities. You're not going to do them all. Make paint a flag, made an English trifle. My kids are going to love all these um, recipes and things. My girls, having girls, I think they're absolutely going to love that. Make your own tricolor cockade. Enjoy a brioche. Oh, that's fun. Make a gentleman or a gentlewoman's wig. Looks like out of cotton balls. Play. There was a game. Making a game. All these things are going to have to do with history, but so there's tons of recipes. Hold a British style afternoon tea. That looks super fun. That's something my girls would also love. Um, this is making a salt map. See, that's fun. There's just so many different activities. You definitely do not need to use them all. But see, there's week eight, week six, week six, week six, week eight, week eight. So there's a few different options. You could do one a week. There's week eight. So they give you a few different options for each week. So you can just decide if you wanna do one a week or if you want to just do it every once in a while or just pick the ones that look the most interesting or you could do all of them.
So the last thing I got is the timeline. Year three, early modern, US and world history from 1600 to 1850. This is a full color timeline. The nice thing about this, to me, I'm not a big fan of those timelines that take up your entire house and you have to put them on the wall. So I love that this is something that um, you keep in this book. We did a timeline, we did the sunlight timeline years ago that was in a spiral notebook like this and we just added pieces to it. And it was it's still a great way to see where things fit. So they've got um, the time period up here at the top and then it's separated by like the Americas here and then Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia. So you can see it happening on the same page, the same time period, but we've got one section here and one section here and they even have North America and Central and South America. So it's kind of neat how you can see how everything happened, but in different places. They've got the information down here of what happened and then you go to the back of the book and that's where you find the pieces here and you just cut them out and glue them onto the timeline piece. So I'll go ahead and flip through this and then I'll show you the timeline pieces. So that is your timeline. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really love this curriculum and it's been super fun to show you. And I am one of those people that just, I have to see it in person or I have to be able to see a flip through like this if it's not something I can get my hands on. I was blessed to be able to see BiblioPlan in person this year at the curriculum that I just went to. And I'll link that video below if you wanna see that convention and the exhibit hall and all that stuff. But I love seeing all the stuff, all the BiblioPlan options all spread out on at their booth and stuff, it was really cool. But since some of you may not have been able to go to a convention or maybe you haven't seen this in person, I really hope that this flip through was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about today or showed you or any questions about BiblioPlan history, please leave me a comment or any questions in the comments below. And I would love to answer any questions that you have. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see videos like this, curriculum reviews and flip throughs and thrifty things too, make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you're notified every time my videos come out, which is every single week. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.